faint memories of a girl came to mind. That was it. I remembered. That girl from before. It was only for a moment, but no doubt about it, it was that girl who saved me. H hey! Wait! At any rate, I had to ask her about what was going on. I stood up and ran into the trees. I pushed my way through the pathless path and into the trees, arriving at a small open space. I looked around, but couldn't see the girl. Damn it, I lost her. But no matter how much I tried to recall that time, there was no doubt about it, it was that girl. So she hadn't been a hallucination. So then, why had Officer Kawamura lied to me? Why did he say there was no girl like that in the village? I didn't know why. Maybe she didn't live in the village. But if so, then why was she in these mountains? Huh? As I quickly glanced around, I saw something through the trees. It was too dark to see, but something was standing there. What was it? I slowly approached. Looked like a small shrine. It was a small shrine, right? What was it doing all the way out here? It looked rather old, but who or what was it dedicated to? I decided to open the shrine door. I decided to open the shrine door. It was too dark to see what was inside. I worked up all my courage to open it. Then I reached out, grabbed it, and softly pulled. Slowly, slowly. Tarasan? Ugh! Suddenly I heard a voice coming from behind me. I turned around, surprised, and Officer Kawamura stood there. Where did you go? You suddenly disappeared, so we were worried, he said, looking relieved. No, I, uh, got lost. Oh, that scared the crap out of me. I thought something had burst out of the shrine at me. Seriously, don't scare me like that. So, did you find her? I asked. No, and we've already searched everywhere we can right now. Is that so? At any rate, I'd keep quiet about the girl from Officer Kawamura. What about that forest over there? I pointed to the woods behind the shrine. Eh? Ah, uh, no, not yet. I see. Let's go then. Wait! Huh? You can't go in there, he said, his face uneasy. What are you saying? That's the only area left, right? I said, somewhat annoyed. Why was he carrying on so carefree at a time like this? What's wrong? Dr. Kanayama and Mr. Mizutani appeared. Ah, Doctor. Tarasan was trying to search the valley. The moment they heard it, everyone fell silent and looked at each other. You, you don't think the folks from the valley... Don't be stupid. There's no way. The folks from the valley? There was a valley behind the forest? What were they talking about? Everyone remained silent, their faces pale. I panicked. What's wrong? We have to find Eiko-chan. Quickly. You can't, Dr. Kanayama said gravely. Why? 
You can't enter that forest. What? What on earth was going on? Mr. Mizutani and Officer Kawamura stared at me. A chill ran down my spine. They weren't the faces the, of the kind villagers I'd seen during the day. Dr. Kanayama continued with a sigh. A man from the city like you might not believe it, but deep in that forest lives a demon. Huh? Did he say a demon? This shrine is dedicated to a spirit that keeps the demon calm, and it's long been forbidden to enter that forest, Dr. Kanayama said in a low voice. The demon protects the valley, and if we villagers set foot in it, they say a great disaster will befall us. I was so shocked that I couldn't say a word. Really, in this day and age? How stupid! I couldn't believe it. This is not the time for such a stupid fairy tale. If she's really in there, what would an outsider know? Dr. Kanayama got angry. That gentle old man glared at me with a face like an ogre. It doesn't matter for what reason. We can't go in there. We mustn't anger the demon. At those words, all the blood rushed to my head. Now was not the time to be saying such stupid things. I couldn't bear it any longer. Well then it has nothing to do with me, an outsider, does it? At the same time, I ran into the forest. Stop him! Do you mean to change your fate? Dr. Kanayama's angry voice followed me as I ran into the woods. Nobody followed me. Inside the forest was a world of darkness. The air hung heavy and ominous, different to the woods outside. It wouldn't be that strange of a place for a demon to reside. Uh. A flash of light lit up the sky once more, like a demon was angry. No way, it couldn't be true. <laughs> How stupid, not in this day and age of science. But just what was this valley they spoke of, and this demon that protected it? Hmm, I had no idea. Do you mean to change your fate? I suddenly remembered Dr. Kanayama's angry screams. What did he mean by that? My fate? It had already changed long ago. At that moment, an unbelievable sight suddenly spread out before me. P blood Blood was all over the trees. I turned my gaze away from the terrifying sight before me before I could stop myself. But no matter how tightly I shut my eyes, I could smell the blood and fear dragged me in. No matter how much I tried to refute it, I couldn't rid myself of a most horrible conclusion. I had to keep going. That was right. All I could do was see the truth. No matter what that truth was, I couldn't run away. As I convinced myself of that, I once again started walking on trembling legs. Then, a short distance later, I was greeted with a cruel answer. The forest was bright red. The majority of the trees were covered in red blood. Then, something that looked like a human lay in the sea of blood on the ground. She was so thin, so small, so bright red that I felt my consciousness slipping. 
what looked like her throat had been torn apart, and blood was still pouring from it. I could only scream at the cruel, merciless truth before me. The next day, they held Kakuta Eiko's funeral in a small temple in the mountains in the cold, pouring rain. Beneath the sunless sky, the villagers gathered with heavy footsteps. Suddenly, I saw Dr. Kanayama and Officer Kawamura amongst them. Kakuta-san e- exited the temple without an umbrella, perhaps due to the shock, and stood in the rain. Mr. Mizutani loitered nearby, unsure of what to do. Once I was done lighting some incense, I quickly stepped outside. The cruel image of the dead body I'd seen mixed with the smiling portrait of the dead girl, and I didn't want to be around any longer. The tiny coffin made the sadness feel even bigger. Plus, I was unable to stand the cold glares of the villagers any longer. After the turmoil of the night before, I was painfully aware of their hostility and hatred towards me. For sure, I had broken one of the villagers' rules. But for their attitudes to change that much was strange. There had to be some other reason for it, right? It seemed like the village was hiding some terrible secret. Tarasan, I turned around at the voice, and Officer Kawamura stood behind me. So, did you discover anything? I plucked up the courage to ask. Yes, well, enough that we can hazard a solid guess as to what happened. He answered vaguely. Not that he really had to tell a civilian like me, anyway. But they seemed oddly calm, considering they seemed to have some idea of what was going on. It didn't seem like they were investigating it. I suddenly remembered the mysterious girl I'd run into in the forest. It it couldn't be her, could it? I certainly couldn't see her amongst the villagers at the funeral. Who on earth was she? You should leave this village now. I'll see you out later, Officer Kawamura said without looking at me, and left. This wasn't good. At this rate, they would run me out of town. I wouldn't be able to investigate at my own pace anymore. I had to do my best to avoid running into Officer Kawamura and find out what I could about Yumi's death as quickly as possible. I panicked and quickly walked out of the temple grounds. As I descended the stairs leading out of the temple grounds, the villagers stirred over something. At first I thought it was over me, but then I realised it wasn't. They all looked at a woman in mourning clothes who passed me as she went up the stairs. The woman slowly ascended the stairs amongst their strange glances. Even I painfully felt the tension in the air. It was hatred and hostility, but it was far worse than what they had directed at me. It was a strange atmosphere, like they would turn murderous if one misstep was made. But the woman didn't so much as flinch and continued walking. It was like she was aware of her position. Who on earth was this woman? Why were the villagers so hostile towards her? Why are you here? As soon as the woman reached the top of the stairs, Kakuta-san ran wildly at her, as though to beat her. Mr. Mizutani did his best to hold him back. The woman appeared to say something to him, but I couldn't hear it from the bottom of the stairs. 
All I could hear was Kakata-san's angry, screaming voice. Then... My body froze in sudden fear. The woman tumbled down the stairs and lay in front of me, just like a broken mannequin, her body unnaturally twisted. From beneath her messy hair, she seemed to glare at me reproachfully. The puddle beneath her slowly turned red. No matter how you looked at it, she was... She was dead. Even so, my body refused to listen to me, and I couldn't go near her nor look away. I I struggled to breathe. Was this even real? My mind went blank. I didn't know anything. Hurry up. Carry her away. The loud scream brought me back. I looked up and Dr. Kanayama came running towards the woman with furious speed. What are you doing? Quickly! Frozen time finally started moving again at his screams. The frozen villagers all moved, as though a curse had suddenly been broken, and they quickly carried the woman inside the temple grounds. Then Mr. Mizutani, holding onto Kakuta-san's shoulders as he stood frozen, followed the rest of the men. All the energy drained from my body, and I fell to my knees on the wet ground. I had no power to stand up. Everybody had gone. The sad rain continued to fall as though nothing had happened. I had no idea what was what. Was what I had just seen actually real? That woman had slowly climbed the stairs and then Kakuta-san stabbed her with something. It had just happened and yet I couldn't remember it well. Maybe that woman had tripped and fallen all by herself. It was no good. I couldn't trust my own memories. Why did all these terrifying things keep happening? Why was this happening to me? The unbelievable reality of what had occurred, in addition to the cold rain, beat down on me mercilessly. I didn't really remember what happened after that. But I didn't feel like returning to Officer Kawamura's place so I found a storehouse that wasn't being used outside the village and slept there. When I woke up, the rain had stopped, and I could see the strange blue moon through the broken roof. The shrine, the demon, the valley, the mysterious girl, the dead elementary school student, the woman in mourning clothes, and Yumi's self-immolation. Unable to understand anything, Various questions appeared and disappeared in my head. I had to think carefully. What on earth should I do? What would be the best thing to do? This was a fork in my fate. I had to think. I thought I should look into who that mysterious woman was. Just, who was she? She didn't appear to be one of the villagers. Maybe she had something to do with Yumi's death. I suddenly had a thought. If I could solve the riddle of the girl, maybe I would learn the secret of the village and the truth behind Yumi's death. Just what secrets was this village hiding exactly? The next day, I waited for evening to fall, and then I made my way towards the centre of town. The villagers were 
no doubt hostile towards me because I had entered that village, that forest. I couldn't do anything that might make me visible during the day. Plus, it would be bad if Officer Kawamura found me and then chased me out of town. Taking extra precautions, I walked through town in the hat and workers' clothes I found in the shed. The middle of town was noisy. Villagers carrying knives and hoes rushed around. That peaceful village of the last few days seemed like a dream. Okay, hurry up. Not that one, the big one. The villagers' voices echoed. Both the women, children, and even the elderly were desperately running around gathering weapons. It looked just like a war zone. What on earth was about to happen? A chill ran down my spine at the strange sight. It didn't matter. If any of them found me there, I'd be in deep shit. Taking care not to be seen, I hurried away. As I walked towards the mountains, I saw the stone steps leading up to the temple. Nearby was eerily quiet and I couldn't sense anyone. Perhaps all of the villagers were in town. Suddenly, I remembered that terrifying sight from the day before. Why did it happen? Why did that woman have to die? At any rate, I had to carefully investigate the temple. There might be a hint hidden somewhere. I decided to go into the temple grounds. I decided to go into the temple grounds. That woman in mourning clothes had to have been carried in there. Perhaps her dead body was still there. I slowly climbed those long stone stairs. But the temple was completely closed. I could barely see inside through a small gap, but I couldn't see that woman's dead body. Seemed they'd already moved her somewhere else. Damn it, where on earth did they go? No, could that woman actually still be alive? No, there was no way. No matter how you looked at it, she had died. Oh yeah. Maybe she was in Dr. Kanayama's practice, I suddenly thought. Whether she was dead or alive, they would have to take her there first. All right, let's go, I thought, and started walking. Hmm? At that moment, I noticed that I'd stood on something. I looked closer and saw it was a small folded piece of paper. It had gotten mushed in the rain. I picked it up and opened it carefully so that it didn't rip. What was this? It looked like a charm. Something was written on it, but it was wet, so I couldn't tell what. Was it a charm or something? Did that woman drop it? But then... Seriously, where did she go? I don't know. I could hear voices at the bottom of the stairs. They appeared to be coming this way. What should I do? If they found me, I'd be in big trouble. I had to hide, quickly. I panicked and dove into the nearby thicket. And about that outsider... What? When I saw who it was, I was so surprised I nearly made a noise. Peering from inside the thicket, I saw Dr. Kanayama and Kakata-san standing there. Uh, unbelievable! Why were they strolling around town? Uh, hey! Kakata-san killed that woman yesterday! So then, 
Maybe Kakuta-san didn't actually stab her? Did I see it wrong? Anyway, I had Kawamura look into it, and it looks like he's an acquaintance of that teacher, Kakuta-san said. Shit, they'd found out. I see, so that's why he didn't want to leave. We intended to watch over him at Kawamura's house, but he left. Watch over me? So, Officer Kawamura letting me stay at his house was just Kakuta-san's orders? So, Officer Kawamura really was under his thumb. But why me? Was there something they didn't want me to know? But if we don't find him soon, then it's probably safe to assume the valley people got him, Dr. Kanayama said, worried. Perhaps like how they got Miss Yumi. Well then I'll just stab them like I did that woman, Kakuta-san screamed, his voice full of hatred. Damn it, so he really did stab her then. And he used his authority to hide it. But even so, what was up with that woman? Those two seemed to know something. Oh yeah, maybe Kakuta-san. No, that Kakuta asshole killed Yumi. Just like that woman in the morning clothes. Anyway, I'll deal with all those valley people. Eiko was killed. I'll never forgive them for that. Kakuta-san's voice seethed with anger. Kakuta? At any rate, this isn't the time to deal with the outsider. We need to quickly move these things. Having said that, the pair went into the storehouse beside the temple and started moving things that could be weapons. But what was going on? Was there really a valley? Was it really a valley person that killed Eiko-chan? I still had no idea what was going on. Not to mention the villagers seemed very serious about it all. Whatever. First things first. It was undoubtedly Kakuta who killed Yumi. I thought I'd watch them just a little longer. I thought I'd watch them just a little longer. When I thought about Yumi, it made me want to jump out of the bushes and hit that Kakuta asshole right away. I wanted to squeeze my hands around his neck and wring the truth from him. But if I showed myself to these two, they'd make a fuss again. I'd have to endure it a little longer and observe. Then I'd wait to get him alone and question him, nice and slow. I clenched my fist, and when I'd calmed myself, I held my breath and watched the pair from the bushes. Hey you! What are you doing there? At that moment, I suddenly heard a voice from behind me. What the? I turned around, surprised. Standing there were the villagers, who had gathered at some point. They glared at me, holding knives and metal pipes. What are you doing? Someone yelled. They all stared at me in silence. Uh, uh... Damn it, they found me. What's going on? Hearing the fuss, Kakuta and Dr. Kanayama ran over. Y you You're alive, Kakuta said, surprised when he saw me. Shut up, murderer, I screamed. I heard what you said. What did you do to her, you asshole? C calm down, I haven't done anything. Liar, you killed her. Don't be stupid, that teacher killed herself. 
Kakata desperately tried to make excuses. That asshole! Where did his lies end? I blew my top. Shut up. You killed her, just like that woman at the funeral, didn't you? And now you intend to kill me too, huh? What is he saying? The villagers, hearing my screams, looked confused. You assholes are Kakata's friends as well, right? Why did you kill her? Hey, he's acting strange. Be careful, he might be a valley person already. One of the villagers screamed. That's right! He entered the demonic forest and returned alive! Maybe he was the one who killed Eiko! Don't be stupid! It wasn't me! I'm not a valley person! I desperately tried to refute them. But what were they talking about? What on earth was a valley person? The villagers all stared at me. Their eyes were filled with hatred, and I could feel their murderous intent. Kill him, they muttered. Yeah, get him. Kill the valley person. The voices slowly got louder. Kill the valley person. Kill the valley person. Kill the valley person. They continued screaming those ominous words. Then they raised their weapons above their heads and slowly approached me. Shit, at this rate they probably were going to kill me. I panicked and ran. That was all I could do. Hey, wait! I could hear Kakata screaming behind me. Shut up, did you really think I would wait for you? You can't kill him! Get him! The villagers all chased after me at once. I ran as fast as I could through town. Wait! Wait! When I turned around, the number of villagers chasing me had multiplied. There were even women and children amongst them. Help me! What was going on? It was like I'd gotten lost in a horror movie. I had to get away, quickly. If I didn't, they really would kill me. Oh yeah, first I should hide in the rear mountain, I suddenly thought. If I hid in the demonic forest, they wouldn't follow me there. But what would I do if there really was a monster there? No. There was no time to be thinking about that. I mustered all of my willpower and ran for the mountain. It was night by the time I entered the mountain. Hey! Is he there? No, nothing. He can't have gone that far. Look over there. We'll find him. The lights of the torches wriggled, and the villagers' voices echoed in the darkness. I was fine until I reached the mountain, but on my way to find the demonic forest, I'd gotten lost, and the villagers were hot on my tail. I'd managed to hide in the bushes, but it was only a matter of time until they found me. Even if I tried to run, I had no idea where I was. If I wasn't careful, they'd see me. I was at a loss. This village was crazy. Kakata had the village underfoot, and not only was he a killer, but he was trying to kill all the valley people as well. And there was no doubt that he had something to do with Yumi's death as well. But just who were the valley people? That woman in mourning clothes? The mysterious girl? Whoever killed Eiko? Why did she have to die? What was going on in this village? Meaningless questions filled my head. I had no idea about anything anymore. Well then, I'd just have to go into the valley. 
I suddenly thought. There had to be a valley on the other side of that demonic forest. If I went there, I'd be able to understand all these riddles. Whatever happened, I had to get to the valley. Damn it! Right as I thought it, I took one step and, mistakenly, stood on a dry tree branch. He's here! Over here! Damn it! They'd found me. The light from the torches got closer with the villagers' voices. It looked like they had me completely surrounded. Ugh! Suddenly a figure jumped out of the bushes. Crap! Was done for! Was I really going to die? Shh! Be quiet! Looking closer, the mysterious girl stood before me. She gripped my arm with a slender hand. Quickly! This way! Then she dragged me full speed into the darkness of the trees. How far had we run? After running through the trees for a while, we appeared before the small shrine. <sighs> Hang on, I can't run anymore. I stopped and sat on the ground. Running full speed through an unfamiliar forest had left me short of breath. Hurry, it's just a little further. But the girl grabbed my hand and tried to force me to stand up. Then I said, short of breath, where are we going? Where are we going? I said, short of breath. The valley. The villagers won't chase us there. W what? Then you're one of the valley people. That's right. And what of it? Now let's go, quickly. W Wait! It was no good. My knees were shaking so bad that I couldn't stand up. Please, just give me a minute, I pleaded. Fine, but just a minute. <sighs> Thank God. Looked like she'd finally given in. How pathetic. But even so, she sure was a strong-willed girl. At any rate, we decided to hide in the nearby bushes to rest for a moment. You were the one who helped me after the accident, right? Why did you help? I asked as I slowly caught my breath. My teacher showed me your old photo, said you were her first love. I wouldn't have helped if it wasn't you. You knew Yumi? I accidentally said a little too loud. Shh! Sorry. Hey, please tell me. Uh, what's your name? Tae. Tae-chan, huh? Just Tae is fine. I'm already 17, so don't treat me like a kid. I thought she really was a strong-willed girl. I thought she really was a strong-willed girl. Well, she was 17, so she was around that age. At any rate, it appeared that she knew something. I had to get her to tell me. Hey, what on earth is going on with this village? This valley? And demons. What are they on about? And you know something about Yumi, don't you? I asked her. But she remained silent and didn't answer. Hey, please, tell me. I have the right to know, don't I? I looked into her eyes. There was no way I was going to give up. You're right. You do have the right to know. Seemed I'd finally got through to her, because she slowly started talking. 
finally, it was time to open the door to the truth. There's a village in the valley beyond those trees. Us folks call, they call the valley people live there. Valley people? Yeah, there was what they might have called in the past a witch hunt. 80% of the villagers were chased into the valley and forced to live there. Then the discrimination began, calling them the valley people. So that was it, and that was why they hated the people from the valley. But what's this legend about the demon? I asked. There's no such thing. How could you think there is? It was a story they told so children would stay away from the valley, and at some point, it became a legend. Well, it seems they all believe it now, though. At any rate, if there was someone in the village that they didn't like in the past, they chased them away to the valley. If someone was called a valley person, then there would be no complaints even if someone killed them. No way. This type of fuss isn't rare. Some have been killed just for entering the village. Ridiculous. My chest was so full of rage that it felt like it might burst at any second. You mean people suffered for no real reason? No, not without a reason. I once again remembered my brush with death with the villagers. They attacked with no reason, and that fear seemed to repeat day after day. And you're fine with that? Why don't you fight back? I said in a loud voice. Miss Yumi said the same thing. Yumi did? Yes. As she said that, her eyes seemed even sadder than before. She knew about the valley and fought with the villagers about it all by herself. She wanted to reveal it to the world and have everyone atone for their sins. Yumi, when I thought about her lonely battle, my heart grew heavy. So, she was killed. Taya nodded silently at my words. Kakuta instructed the villagers, told them she was a valley person. Yumi. Then, I quietly said, take me to the valley. Take me to the valley, I said quietly. Yeah, sitting here in sadness now wouldn't do me any good. Please, take me there. Okay. She nodded quietly again. Just you watch. I'd survive and avenge Yumi's death. Having decided, we jumped out of the bushes once more. But then... We finally found you. As we stepped out of the bushes, Kakuta stood at the head of the villagers. Mr. Mizutani, Officer Kawamura, and of course, Dr. Kanayama were amongst them. We've been looking for you. So you were hiding in there, huh? Why are you running? Kakuta said. Kakuta! Taya screamed, her voice full of hatred. You! The villagers seemed surprised to see her. Oi! Quickly! Step away! Dr. Kanayama screamed at me. She's one of the valley people. Do you want to die? Shut up! What are you talking about? You were the ones who killed Yumi! 
Don't be stupid. We told you. She killed herself. Lies. It's true. She killed herself. Because of that girl. What? She killed herself because of Tyre? What don't you understand? She's not human. She's a demon. Huh? I unconsciously looked at Tyre standing beside me. No. They're trying to fool you. She screamed. Don't listen to her. She's after your blood, Kakuta said. B be quiet, you murderer. You've been watching me to make sure I didn't uncover what happened, right? That's not it. We've been protecting you from the valley people, and were trying to chase you from the village before this happened. That girl is a vampire, Officer Kawamura said, aiming his gun. I don't know what you've heard, but whatever she's told you is a lie. Yumi was also fooled, just like you, and she drank her blood. Then when she realized that she would become a vampire too, she killed herself. <laughs> That's stupid. You really think I'd believe something like that? I screamed. What on earth were they saying? But the villagers were serious. We understand how you feel, but it's the truth. She also killed Eiko. You saw the wound on her neck, right? Anyway, if you don't want to die, just come over here. Kakuta screamed. No, it's all lies. You mustn't believe them. They'll kill you. Quick, we must escape to the valley. Taya looked at me. Please, believe me. What on earth was going on? I was so confused. I didn't understand anything. In the end, I... Believed Taya. I believed Taya. A vampire. Who would believe in something like that? They had to be lying to cover up that they killed Yumi. There was no doubt that they intended to kill me and the valley person. What's wrong? Quickly, come this way. Shut up, you won't fool me. I screamed at Kakuta. I found out your secret, so you intend to kill me. You're wrong. Please believe us. Do you really want to end up like that teacher? Officer Kawamura desperately screamed. Shut up. You're just Kakuta's yes man. <laughs> Did he really think I'd believe a guy like him? Come, let's go. We have to move quickly, Taya said, grabbing my hand and running into the trees beyond the shrine. W wait, you're really going to die. I could hear Dr. Kanayama's pained screams behind me. We ran desperately through the darkness. Just like when I found Eiko-chan, the forest was filled with an ominous silence. Everything was dark, so I couldn't see a thing. Was there really a valley past here? Is it still far from here? Still feeling worried, I asked Taya before I could stop myself. But she said nothing. Hey, what's wrong? Finally, it's just the two of us, huh? Huh? Her sudden words surprised me. What was she saying at a time like this? You're the one in the wrong here. I told you over and over to leave the village, and yet... Hey, what's wrong? I couldn't see her face in the darkness. 
but I could feel her hand on my arm shaking. You knew that teacher, so I wanted to help you, but... Hey, Tae? I can't hold it in any longer. I want your blood. <laughs> Tyre suddenly attacked me. I tried to run, but it was so dark that I couldn't see anything. <laughs> A sharp pain ran down my neck. At that very same moment, my consciousness began to fade. You don't have to worry. Now you'll be one of the valley people, Taya said quietly by my neck. And I made her one of us as well. How stupid to die like that. But you, I think you'll understand the wonderful lives we lead. Damn it. The strength drained from my body and I couldn't do anything. So the village's story was true. Taya really was a vampire. Well, let's go to the valley. My consciousness was gradually fading. What was going to happen to me? Was I going to become a vampire? Yumi. I quietly stopped breathing in the arms of the witch. What sights awaited me when I next opened my eyes? <laughs> <laughs>